Hello, I'm Cecilia Binda and I'm a gastroenterologist and I work in gastroenterology and digestive endoscopy unit in Forlì and Cesena hospitals in Italy. I would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for the opportunity of presenting our study entitled Trial Sequential Analysis of US Guided Gallbladder Drainage versus Percutaneous Cholecystostomy in Patients with Acute Cholecystitis. I also would like to thank Professor Alessandro Cucchetti, Dr. Carlo Fabri, and all the other co authors. So, according to the recently updated Tokyo guidelines, non surgical approaches for acute cholecystitis are now considered an option of treatment for patients that are unsuitable or at high risk for surgical cholecystectomy. Several studies have been published to date comparing the achievable results between US-guided and percutaneous gallbladder drainage. According to these studies, US gallbladder drainage appears to be superior to the percutaneous approach, mainly in terms of reintervention rate. Meta-analysis of such comparative studies may provide a higher degree of evidence than single studies. However, Meta-analysis results may also be affected by false positive and false negative results. So to understand how much credibility a meta-analysis can have in this clinical scenario, we applied a statistical technique called trial sequential analysis. This analysis recalls the interim analysis of the randomized studies where, however, instead of the patients, there are the single studies introduced in chronological order. All comparative studies between US gallbladder drainage using lumen opposing metal stents and percutaneous gallbladder drainage for acute cholecystitis until July 2021 were used for meta analysis and trial sequential analysis. All the included studies should report technical success, clinical success, overall adverse events, unplanned readmissions, and need for reinterventions. The trial sequential analysis is made up of conventional boundaries, which defines a P less than 0.05, the accurate information size, which defines the number of patients enrolled in the meta-analysis, the required information size, which defines the number of patients who would be enrolled to verify a given a priori hypothesis, and the monitoring boundaries, which defines the clinical situation when a trial must be suspending for manifest superiority. In our study, three observational studies and one randomized control study were included. And the accurate information size was of 535 patients. So technical success was in favor of percutaneous gallbladder drainage. But the trial sequential analysis estimate that 1,663 participants would be required to avoid type 1 error, so that these results can still be a false positive finding. Clinical success was similar between the two techniques, and trial sequential analysis supported the absence of any demonstrable superiority of one therapy, rather than a type 2 error. Conversely, US gallbladder drainage reduced overall adverse events and unplanned readmissions, and trial sequential analysis confirmed that these were not false positive results. Finally, US gallbladder drainage proved less interventions, but this finding would be need additional 97 patients to the accurate of 535 to prove that this is not a false positive result. So concluding, the present meta-analysis and trial sequential analysis showed that despite the equivalent clinical success, US gallbladder drainage using lumen opposing metal stents convincingly demonstrate a considerable advantage in reducing both overall adverse events and unplanned readmissions. 
its superiority over percutaneous core bladder drainage is large enough to be considered for future recommendation. Conversely, the need for interventions required additional studies. Thank you.